I do miss the parks of New York, uh, Central Park, of course, in Manhattan, and uh, Prospect Park in Brooklyn, a big park there that I used to live next to for about 10 years. But, uh, you know, good old Griffith Park here in Southern California, really take it for granted. It's an incredible uh, environment, all kinds of stuff to do, and I do not spend enough time here. So, I'm trying to rectify that today a little bit. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Robert from Thrillright.com. How you doing? So today I woke up and I just felt like riding a train. And luckily, I live near Griffith Park. And there's a place here where you can do that. It's called Travel Town. There's actually two locations. There's another location that also operates some uh, Griffith Park railroad engines. I'm going to try to check that out a little later as well. But uh, yeah, Travel Town has been a part of Griffith Park since my entire life, far back as I can remember. Uh, again, growing up here in Southern California, I'm sure I came as a little kid, but it has been decades since I've been back. And it's so close by to where I live right now, so I thought, you know what, perfect morning to uh, take a look around. It's cooled off, we had a bit of a heat wave, it's much more pleasant today. So uh, yeah, looking forward to a very pleasant day outdoors with some trains. So let's go take a look around. front gate a nice plaque travel town dedicated to preserving for posterity the various types of transportation equipment that helped build our state and nation awesome there are two enclosed exhibit spaces there's a big uh, exhibition hall and another smaller gallery and those remain closed but all the outdoor exhibits are uh, Clearly available here, and you can see across the way there's a cute little uh, train station stop for the train ride. And it looks like this is a, a restored waiting station from the uh, Pacific Electric, once the largest and most varied interurban railway in North America. Huh. The station was refurbished in 2011 by Katie Nier. Girl Scout Troop 751 as her gold award project. Well done, Katie. Yeah, this is pretty cool. This uh, Pacific Electric line, I was completely unaware of until right now. And it says here, its lines developed growth patterns throughout Southern California that are still being felt today. The rail vehicles were known as the big red cars by employees and patrons alike. Now that is one mighty engine. They're, uh, they're pretty amazing pieces of technology. So beautiful. And look at this. Presented to the children of Los Angeles by the Southern Pacific Company. I don't know what it is about the scale of these wheels, but they are impressive. And part of what I think appeals to me about trains, and look at these giant pistons to drive them. Ah. Oh. And to think this was the uh, dominant form of transportation in our country for quite some time. And it's still very important in a lot of ways to many industries. Neat. Looks like we can walk up inside. Excellent. Oh, and yeah, there are some QR codes periodically around the exhibits where you can uh, scan with your phone and get a little more uh, relevant information about what you're looking at. All right, let's head up inside to the main cabin or whatever they call it where the engineers pilot the trains yeah look at that yeah that is one big heavy piece of equipment right there impressive all the various knobs and levers and switches it's all very analog which i really enjoy <laughs> there's nothing fly by wire on a steam locomotive <laughs> oh man, again to drive one of these down the rails, that's kind of a bucket list item I wouldn't mind achieving someday. And we can thank Bellier Truck Company for actually delivering all these various uh, train parts to Travel Town. I don't know if the plan is to 
restore these old passenger cars at some point and part of me hopes no that they kind of leave it in this state of decay it's kind of neat to see the fading and peeling paint just a reminder that these are relics of a bygone era suspension provided by our friends at the national coiled spring company I guess this uh, passenger car at one point serviced the state of Pennsylvania or was that not how the uh, naming convention of train cars works? I'm really not much of an expert on trains. I just think they're neat. I think despite what the sign says there that the museum store is open, I don't think that is correct. I'll double check again a little later, but uh, kind of neat right out here. Another big beautiful locomotive from the american locomotive company 1925. Oh, look at that. Oh. and of course i think anybody who works in themed entertainment their passion or interest in trains stems directly from walt disney's own he was obviously one of probably the most famous train aficionado i know of and uh in his earliest dreams for disneyland he always described it as some place you've never seen before and it's surrounded by a train. It's kind of the first attraction that Walt knew was going to be in his park. Uh, well, there's some other cool trains back here, but the area is closed for a special event today. So, can I get kind of a distant look at the, the other exterior exhibits back here? Well, this is a bit of an unexpected surprise. So, back here by the restrooms, there is something called the Dining Car China Garden. During the golden era of American passenger trains, 1880 to 1971. Wow, that late. Many different railroads competed for travelers. Each individual railroad took great pride in the quality of its dining car service, frequently using custom patterns of China on the tables. These China patterns are often decorated with flowers and plants common to the region the train traveled through. Brilliant. All right, there you go. You've got the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad. The flora of the South China pattern with hibiscus, poinsettia, and jessamine. I've never heard of the jessamine plant before. And the Southern Pacific line, the Prairie Mountain Wilderness Flowers China pattern. And these incorporate the California poppy, the azalea, ruby lily, and baby blue eyes. And the Pullman Company featured an Indian tree pattern with the mythological tree of life. And then back there, Union Pacific Railroad had a Portland Rose China pattern. A Caroline Test Out Rose. Well, what do you know? This is fascinating. Didn't realize I'd learned something about flowers today. And uh, fine China for that matter. I think I love things that move. You know, whether it's cars, planes, boats, trains, vehicles that transport us somehow are just quite captivating and the aesthetics of the train industry are, are as beautiful as any other. I just love the look of the vehicles and the look at this station or whatever you call this storage uh, shed for the big locomotives. Stunning. So great. I tell you what, I love me a good cow catcher. Just the fact that they're called cow catchers is already great, but yeah, more more uh, more vehicles need uh, some uh, front end bling, like old steam locomotives have. <laughs> yep, just plain magnificent. It is cool to see how many of these pieces were donated by the various railroad companies, and this is engine 26. In the Western Pacific Railroad. Ah, so great. And of course, whenever I'm this close to kind of a classic steam engine, I can't help but think of the amazing train that Doc Brown unveils at the conclusion of the Back to the Future trilogy, his Jules Verne flying train. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, probably one of my favorite sequences in that entire trilogy. And look at that graphic. 
gorgeous. It's more of a classic colorful look for an engine. They call it engine number one. I kind of wonder if this ever served in an entertainment capacity. This feels very much like a, a theme park train. And it says Mariposa on the side there. I wonder if that's a clue as to where it came from. Again, just not much of a train expert, so I'm just here to enjoy the visual splendor more than anything else. The old 4439. Ah, yes, I remember it well. Chugging down the rails. I don't know why I'm trying to sound like an old uh, train engineer. <laughs> classic caboose from the Union Pacific line and now I th I'm pretty sure that's a caboose and now I'm wondering why a caboose is called a caboose and why it is traditionally the last train or the last car in a lot of trains this is unusual here is an, a Pacific Electric I don't even know if that's an engine. Perhaps it is. But that is a design I have never seen before. I don't know what you'd call that slick and avant-garde compared to other train engines of its time. But yeah, funky. This tank car was constructed in 1911 and was in continuous service for over 50 years. During this time, it has transported over 32 million gallons of petrol, of petroleum products. That's quite a bit. Car weighs 65,700 pounds. Ay caramba. And it was presented to Travel Town by the Richfield Oil Corporation on July 5th, 1961. Huh. Yeah, this uh, passenger car really does have a kind of have a classical look to it. This is the Oahu Railway and Land Company Coach Number no. 1. This wooden car is a fine example of the simple but handsome passenger car design of the late 19th century. It is completely paneled in mahogany and originally had ornate detail work painted on the ceiling. Yeah, I don't know if you can see much detail inside. There's a lot of glare in the glass, but there's a little peak. So this particular car is actually called a combination car number 36 because you can see it was designed one half to haul passengers and the other half to haul mail or uh, luggage fascinating well that's an unexpected factoid both of the Oahu passenger cars are furnished with an early design railroad car water closet <laughs> a tiny space literally the size of a small closet was walled off and protected with the door and I guess uh, yeah people would use the facilities and it would just Deposit onto the tracks. Lovely. <laughs> okay, I've learned something new about cabooses. Up until the 1980s, cabooses served a vital purpose at the end of the train. From the viewing area atop the roof, called the cupola, or cu cupola? Cupola? Francis Ford Cupola? A member of the train's crew could see the along the length of the entire train so that they could be forewarned of problems or adverse conditions that might require the train to stop. How do you like that? Okay. Right, so it says before the turn of the century, the most important people working on a train were stationed in the caboose because they were the brakemen. Until the invention and widespread application of George Westinghouse's air brake in the later 19th century, each passenger or freight car had its own brake, which had to be set individually on each car by means of turning a large wheel. Wow. To stop the train in an emergency, the engineer would ram the locomotive in reverse while the two or three brakemen on the train scrambled across the car roofs from car to car, hand setting the brakes. Good grief. So uh, this car here is the Little Nugget, a Union Pacific dormitory slash club car. Huh. Club cars were developed by the Pullman Car Manufacturing Company in the 1880s, a time when both Pullman and the railroads were experimenting with new types of cars that would make train travel more comfortable and entertaining. Huh. As a period photo of the interior. That definitely looks a little cushier than a lot of other early uh, rail car uh, uh, compartments. 
So the Union Pacific dining car number 3669 was one of the first all steel 36 seat diners built by the Pullman Standard Car Manufacturing Company. And it was uh, created for the deluxe Los Angeles Limited train that traveled between Chicago and Los Angeles via the Chicago and Northwestern and Pac Union Pacific Railroads. Huh. It was described as a palatial train for particular people. <laughs> Here's a train, a bit more of a, I'm assuming a diesel engine? A California Western. I mean, definitely not steam powered, so yeah, pretty, pretty sure this is a diesel. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, I believe the mascot of this train is a skunk wearing a conductor's cap. Nice. That's an interesting uh, cow catcher modification I don't think I've ever seen before where some of the strikes in the middle there have kind of been pushed back. So there is another um, connector on the front. So I guess this engine could be pulled by another. Yeah, I think that's what that is, neat. That is another very handsome engine. The 664. Also transported here by our friends at the Bellia Truck Company. Well, this is a nice little uh, information placard about automatic block signals. Automatic block signaling, ABS, was developed in the late 19th century to allow multiple trains to operate safely in the same direction without the risk of rear-end collision. In an ABS system, the track is divided into segments, aka blocks, and signals are placed at the ends of each block to tell train crews whether or not the track segment ahead is occupied or clear. Huh. Of course, we, uh, we do something quite similar with roller coasters. Important words of wisdom. Always assume there's a train coming at you. <laughs> ah, the lonely lady. <laughs> kind of a melancholy name for a little train car, and I guess that's some kind of a storage tank on that flatbed. But I love this. That's pretty cool, and I bet this had a lot to do with moving and placing the vehicles at this very park. Oh, wow, from the United States Navy. And you can hear the engine running in there. Awesome. Is that what that is? Yeah. Wow. It actually sounds like the engine is running in there. Yeah, I don't think that is for show. I think, well, it is for show, but it is also very much a functional part of this installation. Oh man, that'd be cool to see in action. I love this kind of open air passenger car. I'm not sure it does have kind of a theme park feel to it too, or amusement park. It does not look like something that was used in regular industrial or municipal service, but I could be wrong. But it's kind of weathered look too is cool. Reminds me, one of the great fun Halloween things that I've ever done is here in Griffith Park. The old uh, steamers and the special Halloween overlay they've done in the past. I don't know if they're still doing it, but man, a few years ago, a good friend of mine turned me out of that, and it's really cool. And here's a another kind of very coolly decrepit uh, passenger car, number 28, and with the seats facing outward. Also imagine this was some kind of a rail car for a excursion through nature, or some other kind of sightseeing opportunity. But I, I do like the fact they're keeping it in this kind of uh, state of decay. It tells a story, I like it. So here's the exhibit hall, and then kind of adjacent to it, the Craig A. Smith Volunteer Center and Travel Town Museum Foundation. And again, sadly, both those are closed. So I'll have to uh, make a return visit. All right, train ticket has been procured, and now we just wait to board. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> All right. There it is, our mighty vehicle. Okay, I'm on board, waiting to depart. This train is adorable. <laughs> it is very cozy. <laughs> yeah, I love those big stacks of old railroad ties. I put those way a bit. All right, with the engine firing up, I think we're on our way. There's some hazel on my dad's side, but that's about it. I think we're gonna get a 
closer look at some of the other engines and cars that are kind of closed off to us because of that private event. So, bonus. I love that spooky old dilapidated passenger car.
go, the Melody Ranch Special. A fine engine it is. And this is very appropriate. This is a wood sculpture of the legendary Casey Jones. Probably the most famous railroad engineer in history who uh, gave his life saving a, a railroad car full of people on April 30th in 1900. And the artist Casey McCon, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, uh, specializes in wood carving and uh, is devoted to mastering the art of sculpturing lifelike figures out of wood using a chainsaw. So again, how anybody manages to carve with any detail at all using a chainsaw is kind of mind-blowing. And that's a pretty cool uh, title and artist signature there too. Nice. All right, I think that is gonna bring this one to a close. So as always, thank you so much for coming along. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this look around Travel Town. A new favorite spot here in Griffith Park for me. It's uh, been way too long and I was pleasantly surprised to see how much amazing knowledge is on, uh, on tap here. Really cool, learned a lot of stuff about railroads today. And you know, even with the uh, interior gallery halls closed, I spent a couple hours here and was mightily entertained. And it's free, $4 for the train, so you really, you can't get a better entertainment option here. It's, it's pretty great. And if you love trains, I mean, this place is, you got to come. It's great. So uh, in the meantime, take care and we will catch you in the next one.